Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are actually going to be making a little demon baby creature. I thought it'd be really fun to use this red fabric that I got a while back for a commission. I haven't really touched it for much else, so I thought I'd use it for something and I thought this would be a really cute idea. Anyways, let's get started. So for this piece, I'm going to be using a goat for my reference, but I'm not going to be following it completely because I want to just take a little bit of creative liberties with it and change up the face just a tiny bit. So I'm going to start off with a lump of tinfoil, get it covered in clay, blend everything together, and get a basic shape started. Now even though I'm making a demon creature, I wanted to make a cute kind of baby demon creature. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to have really emphasized large features and I'm also going to be shortening the snout just a little bit to make it kind of more baby-like. So I'm going to start working on where all the features are going to go, starting with the eyes. I'm going to use some glass pieces to mark out where those are going to go. We'll replace these later when we start adding more detail to the face. But I'm going to place those and then I'm going to kind of adjust the face as I start adding features. So one thing that I noticed when I added the eyes was I wanted to have the forehead stick out a little bit more to give it more of a goat look. So I started adding a little bit more clay there. And then once I kind of adjusted that, I started moving on to making the mouth and the nostrils. Now with adding the mouth and nostrils, it really doesn't matter which one you do first. I tend to just pick which one seems easier to start with. Sometimes it's the nose, sometimes it's the mouth. This time around I decided to go with the mouth and start laying out clay to figure out where the lips are going to go. And then once I got to the nose, I started adding a little bit more clay to bring out the shape of the nose and then to define the shape of the nostrils. So it really depends on what creature you're making if doing the nose or the mouth first makes it easier, but normally it doesn't really matter too too much. Just do whatever you feel like. So I kind of got lucky with this piece. I went through all of my extra clay pieces. Every now and again I make extra horns and stuff and I just see what will work for future projects. And I got lucky and found a pair of horns that I think will work really well with this. Now I really like these horns but it felt like something was missing so I decided to make an extra set of horns just right in front of these, kind of just above the eyes, except a little bit smaller. I felt like this made it look a little bit less like a goat and more demon-like. And then after I got those in place, I added a bit of a texture to the face, and then I'm going to bake it in the oven for about 45 minutes at our normal 275 Fahrenheit temperature. And then once that is out of the oven and is cooled, I'm going to switch over to Epoxy Sculpt. I'm going to pop out those glass pieces and replace them with the eyes that I want to use. I had these really cool yellow ones that I made a while ago and I just thought they would work really well. I'm going to glue those in place and then I'm going to start adding clay around them to make the eyelids.
And then moving on to making the clay hands, I thought to add a little bit of an extra creepiness to it, I would make them a three-fingered hand with some really long claws at the end. So I have a wire frame set up for this and I'm going to start adding clay to it. So I'm going to start at the base of the hand and get that covered and then I'm going to start adding clay to the wires for the fingers. I found it easier to add clay to the middle fingers first and work your way out. You just tend to bump them less so I usually start with the middle one first. Once I have my wire frame completely covered, I'm going to blend all the clay together and then start adding the details like our little wrinkles around the knuckles. And then lastly, I'm going to start adding the claws. So for this, I'm going to mark out where I want to connect them. So I'm just going to use my tool and make a little indent. And then I'm going to make some balls of clay all even amounts, roll them into little cones, place them where that little marking is, and start blending the clay in. I'm going to clean up my lines, and I'm going to add kind of a texture to it. I thought lines on the claws would make them look a little bit more rough and jagged, so I decided to go with that instead of leaving them smooth. And just like the face, these can go in the oven for about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And then the last little bit of clay that we need to work on is the back hooves. So I decided to try and save a little bit of my clay and make these a little lighter than normal by starting off with one of my molds that I like using. This one is normally used for paws, but what I did was I cut off the little end where the paw was, and then I just started building up clay to make the hoof. So I added clay there, and then I broke it up into a cloven hoof and just started adding more detail and texture to it. And then once I'm done with the hooves, these can also go in the oven for the same amount of time to bake. Now when you're adding resin to the oven, I do recommend making sure the resin you're using is um, heat safe. So just basically it doesn't react to heat that much. This kind that I'm using is called Total Boat and I've found that it works really well with the temperatures that I use to bake my clay. Okay, so all of our clay pieces are done baking, they've cooled to touch, and we can start on the painting. So our little demon creature is actually going to be just a bunch of different shades of red. I thought that'd look really nice. I haven't worked with red too much lately. And um, I'm going to start with painting the head a nice bright red. I'm going to get those all primered, and then the back hooves, they're going to get primered a more burgundy red. And then once we have everything primered, I'm going to start with the clay head and I'm going to start adding some highlights. So I'm just going to kind of brighten up around the end of the snout and around the eyes. After the highlights, I'm going to start working on some shadows. So I'm going to water down some darker red paint and I'm going to add that around the eyes and then inside the nostrils and the crease of the mouth. What's nice about using watered down paint for the shadows is you don't really need to be extremely precise with it. I usually will just add my paint and then I'll use a damp paper towel to remove any excess paint that is in spots that I just don't want it. I'm going to use this same burgundy paint to start on the horns. So I'm just going to kind of primer the horns a darker color to start off with. And then I'm going to add black to the base of them to even darken it more. And then move over to kind of a paler, more white color at the end. 
I'm pretty much trying to have it fade from a black to a white with a little bit of a red in between. And then once I'm done painting the face, I'm just going to let everything dry a little bit and then I'm going to start peeling the paint off of the glass eyes. So I'm just going to use one of my tools and kind of scrape it away. And then with the hands, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start darkening up the wrist portion. I want to have it darker at the top and then the fingers will be kind of lighter. So kind of similar to what we did with the horns. And then for the claws, I'm going to paint them black and then I'm going to add a bit of a white highlight to them. And then the hooves are super easy. I'm gonna leave majority of the foot the burgundy color, but I'm gonna be painting the end where the hoof is a black. I'm gonna try and blend it a little bit so it's not such a straight line separating the two colors. I want it to fade a tiny bit. Lastly, I'm just gonna add a little bit of a white highlight to the tips of the hoof. Okay, so I've got my clay pieces all painted and done, and now we can move on to the sewing. So here are the little pattern pieces that I used to make our body. I've got everything kind of laid out so you can get an idea of what the body is going to look like. I've got the side portion, the wing, the belly, the arms, the legs, just all of it. So I'm going to start with the side pieces first and basically I have it to where the front half is going to be this bright furry red color and then the back half is more of a minky fabric that's burgundy. That way it's not so fluffy back there. I thought it'd be a cool shape for the body. And I'm just going to get all the side pieces sewn together so we have a left and right. I'm then going to start working on the back legs. I have an inside portion for these that I'm going to be sewing to the leg portion that is on the side of the body. So I'm just going to sew down the fronts of these connecting them and then we're going to get the belly piece. And the belly piece is also broken up between the two different types of fur fabrics. So I'm going to sew those together first and then we can sew the sides to the belly. For the arm fabric, these are going to be the fur fabric as well, and I'm going to be sewing the two pieces together. Just like with the back legs, there's an inside and an outside portion. And we're just sewing down the fronts. I'm then going to go back to the fabric for the body, and I'm going to mark out where we're going to connect the arms. I'm going to cut some slits to where we can connect those, and I'm going to sew the arm fabric in place on the body. And then the fabric piece for the back of our demon is broken up into three sections, mainly because it's not just the fabric for the back, but it's also the fabric for the tail. So I'm starting off with my fur fabric, moving on to the mink fabric, and then back to the fur fabric for the tip of the tail. And then the last two things that we need to sew before we can put our doll together are the ears and the wings. And so with the ears, I decided to go with the kind of goat ears that flop down. I thought those would look really cute. So I've got one side a darker color than the other, but we're still kind of in that red tone. I'm going to pin these together, sew around, and flip them right side out. With the wings, I'm pretty much going to be doing the same thing. I want the underside of the wing to be a little bit lighter, so I've got a different color for that. I'm going to pin these together, sew around them, flip right side out. 
And then I have some markings that we need to sew onto the wing. That way I can stuff the body of the wing without having to stuff the webbing of the wing. So I'm going to get this stitched in place using some backing fabric to mark out where my design is. Remove that backing fabric and then we can stuff the wing and once we start putting the doll together we can add them to the body. So to put our doll together, we're going to be starting with a wire frame. I've made this ahead of time, it's just a very simple wire frame. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the body fabric and we're going to run the wires for the front legs through the holes for them. So we're just going to kind of slide our fabric over the wire frame. And then we can take our clay head and we can start gluing it to the wire for the neck. Once the head is in place on the wire frame, we can then take the fabric for the neck and we can start gluing it around the base of the head. So I'm going to get that in place. I'll want to let that dry a little bit and then we can start closing up the body. So I'm going to start sewing down the body starting with the neck. I'm going to go about halfway and then we're going to take our back piece of fabric and we're going to sew that in place. I'm going to stop once I get to where I want to connect the wings and then I'm going to take the fabric for the wings and I'm going to run them over the wires for them. Once those are in place, we can continue closing up the body and sewing the wings in place. Once I get to the end of the body, I'm then going to switch over to sewing the tail. So I'm going to start at the end of the tail now and then I'm going to sew until I get to the base of the body where the tail connects. While I'm doing this, I'm also lightly stuffing the tail. Now before we start closing up the body completely, we need to finish those back legs. So I'm going to be taking our clay legs and I'm going to be adding them to the wire frame. So I'm just going to be gluing those in place and then I can take the fabric and glue them around the bases of our feet. Once that glue has dried for a little bit, we can start stuffing and closing up the rest of the body with the legs. Moving on to the arms, I'm going to take our clay hands and we're going to add these to the wires for the arms. So you'll notice there's a little bit of extra wire hanging out of the back of our clay pieces and that's so we can connect them to the wire frame. So I'm just going to take a thinner gauge wire, wrap these together, and then I can take the fabric for the arms and glue them around the wrists. Once that's dried, I can start stuffing and closing up the arms just like we did with the legs. Okay, so we have our body all put together and now we need to do our final details. So we're mainly going to be working with the face right now. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding our ears. When I did the sculpting for the clay head, I added little holes for where we're going to add the ears. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue into these holes and I'm going to push the ears in place. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start furring the face. I'm going to start off with pieces of fur fabric that I've cut to fit sections. I'm going to get those in place and then I'm going to use fur trimming to kind of blend everything together and cover up the rest of the face.
Now the fabric glue that I'm using to add the fur to the face takes a while to dry so I'm gonna let that dry completely and then I decided I wanted to add some little plush spikes to the body. So I sewed these little tiny plush spikes, they're just simple triangles, I stuffed them and then I'm just gonna figure out where I want to add them and sew them in place. Okay guys, and here is my little demon creature. I had so much fun with this project and he is so fluffy. <laughs> I'm really happy with how he came out. Now if anyone is interested in giving our little creature a new home, I've got him up for sale on my website. I'll leave the links down below for that. Now while you're down there, you'll see a bunch of other links. These are to art supplies that I like to use to make my art dolls. So if you're curious and want to see what I'm using, you can check those out. Um, if you do buy anything through them, it does help support the channel because these are affiliated links. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time.